uh, piece. We are, well, we're talking about food, I think, right? Yeah, the, the start like of it. three stories. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a local look at where some more unique foods come from. And some stuff that you might not realize is grown here. There you go. All right. Yeah. If you regularly shop at any of the island's farmer's markets, you know how abundant local produce is, but it may surprise you to learn how diverse it is. Crops you might expect in the tropics or Mediterranean are thriving on Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands in part one of our special series Island Grown and our shinkle takes us to Salt Spring Island. <laughs> I wanted to create a jungle here. More than 15 varieties of palm trees grow on Banana Joe Clemente's North Salt Spring Island property. You know, it's like you're not in Canada anymore. It's like you've taken a wrong turn and ended up 1,500 miles south of here. Eucalyptus trees tower above ferns, cactus, bamboo, and the palms, including his namesake. Bananas, right here. This variety produces 50 to 60 small bananas per bunch, but they're not edible. The actual plants are used for making clothing and paper. That's why they're called a Japanese fiber banana. Banana Joe's first foray into planting palms took root on the lower mainland. First winter comes, bad winter. They all freeze, right? They're all toast. And spring comes, they're all looking really bad. And the neighbor comes here and goes, I told you. That triggered the move to Salt Spring. The climate is regulated by the Pacific Ocean, so we don't have extremes. Even on the worst, coldest winter days, we don't get the cold winds. These trees barely even move. So that's what saves our heinies. Growing tropical plants here does have its challenges, though. This should be a lot taller, but because it's growing in rock, it's not growing as fast as it should be. Dry summers are also an issue, and the deer. If deer get in here, this is like a big salad bar. Everybody told me they didn't, but obviously Salt Spring Island deer, like, all... Further south in Salt Spring's Fulford Valley, same challenge, a much different crop. So they were very tiny, small, and we had just put them in, in little containers, and then they were wintered in the greenhouse. Six years ago, George and Sherry Braun planted 987 olive trees on this sunny slope. Since then, the couple has planted 1,500 more with a 95% success rate. Initially, the bronze planted six different varieties of olive trees. In a newly expanded area, they have eight different varieties, all part of what continues to be a trial and error process. Everything was new and everything had to be learned as we went. Theirs is one of only a handful of olive groves in Canada. The others are nestled on Saturna and Pender Islands. In 2016, the olive farm marked a Canadian first. Picked a thousand pounds of fruit and produced 32 liters of extra virgin olive oil. Canadian extra virgin. <laughs> we've had great reviews from the restaurants we've sold it to. They loved it. It's very rich. It's very dark and has a very robust flavor. At seven years old, the trees are still young, but each could produce a pound of fruit this year, though it's very early in the season. Who wants to harvest olives in December? But if it's Canadian olive oil, and if that's what you have to do to get it, that's what we'll do. <laughs> like Banana Joe, the bronze have realized a dream on Salt Spring Island. It's a great little spot to grow things that are just beyond where they should be. <laughs> <laughs> Amber Schinkel, CTV News, Salt Spring Island. Island Grown, brought to you by VIEA Island Good. Tomorrow in part two of Island Grown, we'll take you from end to end of the Cowichan Valley, including a vineyard of a different sort. As expected, the Bank of Canada